I think that what's important here is that in the in the capacity of being able to have more space within tissue. So rather than seeing a lot of undulation in the tissue, we're seeing a lot of space. And that space is engaging with gravity in a kind of ease as if you were underwater, but you're not. And so what it allows is a again, a scope of capability within my system. In, in Continuum, we are always aware that closed systems deteriorate. And what does that mean? It means that there, there is no flow of information that is circulating through that system. And whether it's paralysis or whether it's a, a, some kind of emotional repression or whatever it may be, there is just no question that closed systems deteriorate. As a dancer, and by the way, I'm in my mid-70s uh, during this uh, demonstration here, and so the level of uh, flexibility in my system and openness, et cetera, et cetera, is really not that usual with people of my age. I have no aches and pains, I have no inflammation, I have none of the things, no joint problems, none of the things that you would associate with um, somebody my age. The ability to maintain here, again, right here, the, be, the ability to maintain without efforting, that I'm being supported by a larger capability so that my own energy is not being used to uh, engage in physical activity. And when I say my own energy, there's no change in heart rate, there's no change in any, any of the usual components that would, um, that would uh, indicate uh, a, some kind of arousal in the system and some kind of engagement. My system is basically at rest, and yet it is moving. So that is quite extraordinary. In researching some of the implications of why is it that I am able to do this for such a long period of time uh, and, and not have to get exhausted, I have to say that the information available to us uh, in, in movement orientations that are not so orthodox, I had to go to Dr. Google. I kid around when I call it Dr. Google. But anyway, I was looking up slow twitch type 1 muscle fiber. And what it had said, and now we're moving much more slowly than that, so it's not really within that spectrum, but it's sort of around there. It spoke about a, an abundance of mitochondria, increased cellular respiration, no fatigue. Wow. Well, if that's the case, then my system is able to enter into a nutritive capability that otherwise I might not access. And the other thing that's important here is you can see that my attention, I'm able to maintain attention for a very long period of time. So the, the capacity to be present without inflicting an immediate result changes the way that we engage in the world. I'm not just speaking of it as a physical dexterity at this point, but how we engage in relationship of being able to be present with someone without having to press push, and I'm speaking about this energetically, without any kind of force, but just an openness of engagement, which frees the person or people that you're with in terms of opening up in a way that they never could if they sense any pressure from you. So the issue of this kind of movement as it expands into our social engagement and hopefully further than that in, in, into our 
how we structure government uh, engagements, et cetera, et cetera. How we move is how we think. And how we move is how our brain is functioning at any given time. So when we're looking at diversity of movement, we're also looking at neuroplasticity. And so the ability to maintain a, a wide lens of attention that is completely absorbing reveals elements of, of, um, of creative potential that we just never thought possible. So in the world that we have now of electronics and cell phones and iPads and a kind of world of existential distractedness, this is the opposite of what we are seeing so much of within our world. So I hope you enjoyed looking at this because I certainly enjoyed doing it. So thank you.